So far away, Eric, what's like the most metal thing in media, you think? Uh, Metalocalypse. Metalocalypse is pretty metal. I think for me, it's yeah. particularly one scene from Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which I play every Friday. You can watch me live on stream the day this video goes out. In fact, while this video is out, if you're watching it within a couple hours of being live, I'm playing it right now. And you might see the scene I'm talking about, which is where Raiden, the cyborg samurai, rides to like a final confrontation with a politician who is going to beat to death with his bare hands, riding on a Harley Davidson. And the Harley Davidson has a flaming tribal tattoo. Ever, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's talk about Doom. Doom is a video game where you take control of a character who is literally hell-bent on tearing apart the endless halt of hell with his bare hands. Put a clip in there of a glory kill because it's going to be rad as shit. That game is awesome. Wildly influential and widely considered one of the most important games ever made, you'd think the people involved with its creation would spend pretty much all of their time answering questions about Doom. Well, that's not the case, with one of the creators constantly fielding questions about his hair. So first of all, Eric, are you familiar with Doom creator John Romero and his epic power metal main? No, oh, I'm, gonna send I'm you a not. Picture now. I've heard, I've heard of him. Just, just I've heard a lot about Doom, but never uh, Doom, but never that. Well, there you go. There's a picture. Have a look. Holy shit! Yeah, is it? That's like he's such a main, right? Cause people say power right. metal main. Like everyone has an image in their head. It's probably that image, right? I, I mean, close to it. Yeah, it's it's just yeah. it, it's such an immaculate head of hair. Like, yeah, it is yeah. close to the greatest head of hair I have ever seen. And it's a close second to only one person, and that is Herman Lee from Dragon Force, who I've met a couple of times, and his hair is amazing. <laughs> like, he's all the way down his back, and, like, you know, when he goes on stage, and like, the wind machine's blowing up, he's, like, just shredding guitar solo. I'm like, this is it. This is why the guitar was invented. I think, uh, what is it, Russell Allen from Symphony X has a similar look, actually, to, I, I, uh, I do like Doom, me some Symphony Doom X. Creators. I am a big fan of Symphony X, and Eric, this video is more a chance for us to just talk about things that we find insanely metal, while occasionally Wait, talking about Wait, you're a fan of Doom. Symphony X? I didn't, I didn't, Symphony X kick ass, I didn't out Oh, the Ash is one of my favourite songs. I'll put a clip in now, what? as long as we don't get copyright struck. Please don't copyright strike us, Symphony X. We're trying to promote your band. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, my favourite of their albums for a long time, it was Five, or it was tied between Five and uh, Twilight in Olympus, but, like, Paradise Lost is such a badass record. <laughs> it's so good. Is that the one like the 30 minute long song? Which one's that? I mean, no, I think that's uh, the, Odys uh, Odyssey, the Odyssey. The Odyssey, yes. Not as big of a fan. Joe Watt of, makes sense. But... It's called The Odyssey, right? Yeah, it is literally an adaptation of The Odyssey. And bringing it back to John Romero, excluding those distinguished grey highlights that indicate he is a higher level than anybody watching this, that is pretty much how that guy has looked since the mid 90s. Say for like, you know, a brief period in the 2000s where he cut off all of his hair and donated it to Locks of Love. I Meaning there's like, you know, some kid out there who was rolling around in the 2000s with a head of hair, just directly taken from the head of the man who invented Doom. That's, uh, that's pretty wild. It is indeed. And Eric, you mentioned something to me that I was like, no. You you told me you used to have, like, just the main, right? Yes. Yes, I did. It, it was down past my shoulders. I would do, like, fucking windmills and mosh pits and okay. stuff. Okay. So, do you want me to put a picture of this in to prove it? I, I don't know if I have any. Uh, uh, if I can find some, I will. If I f find a picture... I will. In addition to being an excuse to talk about all things metal, this is also an opportunity for me to help promote the work of myself and my friends. I've already promoted my stream, 
go watch it right now or watch the archives or tune in next week. Eric, what is it you do for a living you'd like to promote right now? I'm a writer, if you can believe that. And uh, I just had a story come out with Grim Dark Magazine. It's a cyberpunk story called Observer. And it's out right now with Grim Dark Magazine issue number 39. It dropped on the first of the month. And it, it's awesome. Go read it. <laughs> Eric, I don't know when this video is going out. We've already recorded like 10 in advance. So this could be several months from now. <laughs> Just keep that in mind. Oh, that's fine. It'll still, hey, it'll still promote it. <laughs> the magazine still exists. You can still go read it. Go read it. Go check it out. But yeah, man, yeah, I, I am yeah. just such a fan of like, all things metal. And I did not have the main when I was younger. When I was a younger man, I had the emo fringe sweats all the way across my face. I'm, I'm, I, mine was past my chin. I had, I had that, but I can see that. I didn't I know how that. to style it, <laughs> so I never got a proper haircut. So I thought, we well, just grow it long, right? That's what you do. It's like, no, you have to get it styled, Carl. Which is why I've just looked so shitty near enough every video we've ever done in terms of my barnet because I just never learned how to style my hair. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> but yeah, I'll put in. Like, yeah. If you can find a younger photo of yourself, I'll put in a younger photo of me with my like re in my emo days. I'll try to find one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I've never been big on like taking pictures of myself or anything like that, so the, uh, it may be a challenge to find one with the longest hair possible. Oh my, I, I don't like the emo photos. I was friends. on like, MySpace. I was taking the ones with, like my hand like that when I was listening to like the <laughs> Rocky Summer and stuff, and I'm like, oh god, no, it's so cringe. <laughs> no. Oh. Cats getting breakfast. Oh, yeah. And bringing it back to John Romero and Doom, being a guy in the mid-90s walking around with a Dragon Force-esque mane of hair earned him, in equal measures, fans and... I want to say enemies, because they're enemies of the hair. And he would frequently be mocked and praised in equal measures um, uh, by people who liked and disliked the hair. And... As someone who had longer hair in their youth, Eric, do you remember that's the thing? It's still a thing now. If you're a man who has slightly longer than normal hair, it's like that's a thing people point out. That's absolutely a fucking thing. Yep, you all know, the time. People will come up and say, "I'm, I'm extremely jealous of your hair," or, or something like that, and or make fun of it. It's yeah. uh, it, it's a phenomenon. Yeah, it's yeah, a, or they make fun of it. Yeah, in equal measure. Or they're like, just, and you can never really tell, yeah, can right. you? Because like when you spot people looking at you, it's like. What's going on? I'm not saying this. I had long hair. I, I, but I do. I'm proud of that. I've still got a full head of hair. I've got two brothers. One's older, one's younger. They're both losing their hair, and I'm like, get wrecked. No, no. I had a haircut today, and I have a deal with my barber. Because I'm 33 years old, and I've told him I've had like you know longish hair my entire life. If it ever starts to thin, it needs to go. It needs to go right away because I don't want to be that guy with thinning hair who grows it out to hide the fact I'm losing my hair. And every time I go to the barber, it's just like I'm sat in the chair and I go, is it still there? And it's like, don't worry, mate, we're good. Just a regular trim today. I'm not bringing out the clippers. I'm like, thank God. Because <laughs> the older yeah. I get, the bigger that fear gets. Right. Right. So, um, you're a big Iron Maiden fan, right? Absolutely, 100%. Up the IMs. Let's go. Oh, oh, man. Okay, uh, so... What is your favorite Iron Maiden moment? Or, I guess, have you seen them live? What would you classify as your favorite Iron Maiden thing? I almost got to see them live one one year. A very, very good friend of mine had tickets to go see Iron Maiden live. And, like, their boyfriend couldn't go to the show. And I thought about calling you, but then I didn't know if you were a fan of Iron Maiden, and I just hung up the phone. I just stood up and walked out of the room for a second. I can't deal with this. I almost got to go I, see I, them. I'm a little offended on, on your behalf. <laughs> like, I thought you were into like, emo music and stuff. It's like, but it's Iron Maiden. <laughs> oh, but no, I've not seen the live, unfortunately. But my favorite Iron Maiden moment, we talked about in a fact theme video. It's uh, Bruce Dickinson. He's like a commercial grade pilot. And he just flies around Iron Maiden's like tour plane. <laughs> There's pictures of him just in like his little pilot's outfit, like, hey, it's me, Bruce Dickinson, come fly on this plane. <laughs> they play like Iron Maiden yeah. over the tannoy and stuff, and it's great. Before, so I, I'm excited. Oh, you would see that. Uh, Gojira is going to be playing in North Carolina. That has nothing to do with Iron Maiden, but I am excited because um, I'm actually going to go, more than likely. 
Like hell. No. God, Gojira, Gojira is one of my favorite heavy metal acts. So I'm, uh, I'm familiar, but it's not one that's been on my list. Like, so let's go for my Spotify. Let's have a look. My Spotify is a fucking mess. I'm one of those like animals who just like I don't have specific playlists. I'll just have like I've got a three thousand song playlist, and whenever I hear a song that's quite good, add to the playlist, hit shuffle every time I play. So my playlist at the moment recommend Gojira because they are they're brutal, but they're like extremely artistic with what uh, what they're doing. They play in odd time signatures a lot, kind of like no prog influence. Uh, a heavier yeah you know, uh, yeah yeah but it's it's never what you expect with them they're they're french as well they're uh <laughs> you don't think of french as being all that heavy metal right when you think france no no you never do but you know they're you know they're also pretty progressive you know they're almost categorized as eco metal by some people because most of their songs are about how we're destroying the fucking planet that reminds me a little bit of the band I like Rise Against where they're like you know they do a lot of like protest songs and Rise Against are like the millennial version of Rage Against the Machine even though Rage Against the Machine like you know still have millennial Exists. fans in that, every time they issue a statement, I think they're like big into like um, veganism and stuff like that and protecting animals. And like okay. some of their music videos, like a real, I can't put clips in of them because they're just, oh, here's the unrated uh, music video where it's just a pizza farm or whatever like that. But mm -hmm. every time they like release a statement, just like espousing these beliefs, like, I can't believe, I can't believe the band rise against are saying this sort of thing. It's like, what do you think they're rising against? It's like that joke, isn't it, about Rage Against the Machine? What machine do yeah. you think they're raging against? Yeah, and people are just... It, it, it's kind of like people who think Homelander, uh, a Homelander was the good guy all along or something, you know? Even it's when he like, just drops a play. <laughs> you know, when they when you talk about media literacy, it's, uh, it's across all, like, news media, music... TV, movies, like all media, that it's an umbrella, you know, and across all boards, people are worse at, uh, <laughs> at interpreting media. Yeah, I couldn't understand it general. to a degree with music because not everyone listens to the lyrics of music. Some people listen to the beat, some people listen to like the melody, but the name of the band should give you some clue as to what they're about, right? That's what cracks me up I, so I much. Mean, even someone like me, I listen to mainly melodic death metal, so <laughs> I'm not looking at the lyrics most of the time either, but I have a general idea of what the band is about, like if, even if I don't know their lyrics. Usually just from the name, right? You can usually tell what's like what's what's going to go in on. And for you then, what's your like favorite just like heavy metal band name? Uh god, in flames, easily. <laughs> Like when when they first came out, In Flames is just. Things how do you I know get that more metal I know that's something like, in... on like Guitar Hero. It's pretty tough. Yeah, like their classic era, definitely. But um, just the name, In Flames. That's it's great. You've won, <laughs> right there. That's the most metal name. <laughs> One for me. I don't particularly like the band, but I do remember. When I met a guy who was a big fan of the band, and he was like the most insufferable mm -hmm. person I've ever met when it comes to music. And we all know that guy when it comes to music, and it's the band. I've known several. It's the band <laughs> Alexis on Fire, which is written, Alex is on Fire. And it's a running gag okay. that the band is called Alex is on Fire. And I met this guy, and he had an Alex is on Fire tattoo. And I went, oh, well, you know, Alex is on Fire, the band. Uh, you know, um, uh, I'm assuming you're a big fan. He went, you don't call them that. What? So it's actually Alexis on fire, and some fans, not me, but some fans, if you said that in front of them, would give you shit for it. And say, what are you doing right now, mate? And just, he spent the next 20 minutes explaining to me how it's really, really offensive to get the name of the band wrong as a joke. Talking about how <laughs> like he was going to hang out with all the other fans who all have this tattoo, because you get into their show for free if you show that you have a tattoo. And it's like, I just thought it was a funny joke, mate. Because it, it does look like it says Alexis on fire. It's like you, me at six. Where everyone reads like, you, meet six. Just meet. It's right there in the middle. Because it's just all like one right, long, long right, sentence. Right. It's like, so if, he was just fucking with you the whole time? No, no. He was just he was genuinely annoyed. 
He was genuinely really? annoyed that I called the band the wrong name as a joke. And I remember, because he like invited himself on this night out we were on. And I remember like, I bought him a drink and I went over to hand him the pint and he went to hold it and he closed his hand too slow. And the pint just fell through his hands, landed on the floor. <laughs> the entire club turned around, looked at him. He stood, went, right, and just left. And we never saw him again. Never. Ne- I'll never sell the guy again. Wow. Well done you for being a, a fan of that band. You know, we go back to Doom now. And what a legend. <laughs> what a hero. Just, he knows what he likes. And, he, <laughs> and he's, it's the band, it's, Alex, is on fire. He just he just knew when to leave. <laughs> that was his cue. <laughs> and bring it back to John Romero and Doom, the fact that he has just this amazing head of hair has kind of just become a thing. To the point where Romero himself has commented on the fact like, there are people who don't even know that he's got anything to do with Doom who know him for his hair. Yeah, yeah. Like, he's become that, like, you know, iconic a part of, like, you know, his his, his outward persona when he comes, like, you know, in That's media wild. stuff. And, like, what's he done since Doom? What the fuck he wants? He's John Romero. Do you know what he was doing? In the 90s, he was trying to make you his bitch. So it was John Romero's Dying okay. Katana, that game that never went anywhere. And he had one of the cringiest ads for a game, which says, John Romero's going to make you his bitch. Wow. Do you remember like, in the 90s where just game adverts just didn't care? Oh, it's just cringe. And you had like, a guy dressed like Crash Bandicoot outside Nintendo headquarters asking the president to come out of fist fighting. Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Sega does what Nintendo. It's like, how's that going, Sega? How's that next console <laughs> going? Coming dead as fuck. I, I, get right. I don't know, but... man. I don't think it's going too well. <laughs> but I think this is no better exemplified than by, and I have it here, a letter written to Planet Quake, a website that would later become Game Spy and is currently dead as fuck, asking a very simple question How does John Romero get his hair to be just so. Shiny. And the thing I should clarify here is, is that John Romero did not write for this website. And the person who was writing in was not a fan of gaming. They had no idea, like, you know, what Quake was. They just knew that they met John Romero at an event, were stunned by how just immaculate his hair was, and were just, and they, over the course of his letter, wrote about how just like they've never seen a better head of hair on a man. In fact, they'd never seen a better head of hair on anyone, including themselves, and they were supremely jealous of how he got his hair to look that shiny, and they looked him up after the fact, found out he'd had something to do with Quake, saw the website Planet Quake, and thought, well, maybe I'll just ask them if they know John Romero, and if they can ask him for some hair care tips. <laughs> like, as if, he didn't write for the site. He had nothing to do with it, but they just like were so. What well, I need to know, and what, what does he do? What's his secret? I must know. So they wrote in, and Planet Quake like, okay, can, do we know someone who knows? Like John Romero was like, yeah, okay, I think we've got an email address here somewhere. So they tracked him down and asked him that question, and he wrote a very nice letter back to that lady detailing step by step everything you have to do to maintain your hair as well as he did. Honestly, I thought it was going to be like the typical, oh, I don't do anything to it response. The thing is, those people fucking suck, right? <laughs> like when celebrities go, okay. You know, what do you do to look the way that you do? And they don't want to say a shit ton of plastic surgery. So they just say, you know, I just, you know, I, I drink a lot of water. It's like, that doesn't help. I drink a lot of water and I don't like you. What what do you actually do? What's the real secret? What's the secret? <laughs> right. like, well, you know, what products do you use? And it's like, whatever products I'm mean, advertised by. So no, what's the actual secret product we can't buy that you actually use? Where they grind up like goat placentas or whatever the fuck. They can't say they bathe in the blood of the innocent. And it's all good fun. But, huh, so, Far Away Eric, like, as mentioned at the start of this video, this, you know, return to creating content on Fact Fiend largely exists as a, you know, reason for me to promote my own stuff and the stuff of my friends. So, if you'd like to promote more stuff right now, go right ahead. I'm just going to keep banging the drum for Grimdark Magazine, because uh, they were nice enough to include me in this month's uh, July's issue. <laughs> just in case this comes out late. This could be going out in uh, like September. But, we don't know. 
We don't know. Okay. <laughs> That's, I don't, uh, I, I say we. still out. Go get it. Yeah, I say we. It's just me. Because I'm the only one running stuff behind the scenes anymore. And it's like, well, I can just do what the fuck I want now, right? <laughs> cool. Right, right. Like, the first month, like, during, like the big, like, six-month hiatus after I like, just... I'm, I'm done with Fact Fiend. I just kept waking up mm-hmm. and being like, I don't actually know what to do. Right. For the past seven years, I've woken up every day and had to do something related to Fact Fiend, either the, the channel, the brand, or the website. And I just didn't know what to do. I'd wake up and go. I have my breakfast, I go to the gym, and I get back in. It's like, okay, it's like 11 o'clock in the morning. Guess I'll play Baldur's Gate. And that was that was it. <laughs> <laughs> it gets really yeah, poor. <laughs> you know, Carl, it, it really seems like you you pulled a Batman. You decided I'm gonna hang up the cowl. I'm gonna go do something else. And then six months later, you're back in Gotham fighting crime. No, it's more like um, that Family <laughs> Guy meme where it's like Lois looking at the pills and she's just sweating. It was just me, like, I've, I've got, like, a list on my phone of, like, article ideas that I've not done. And it's still, like, let's have a look now. I don't know how you count on notes, but it's just on my notes bar. It's, like, it scrolls quite a bit. There's a bunch that I've not done. And I just kept looking at them, and I kept adding new stuff to it. And I was like, when am I ever going to get an opportunity to talk about this? I don't... Right. Like, you know, I did Wiki Weekends. Go support Wiki Weekends. Like, you know, I helped... You know, um, uh, write and host and stuff on top tens. Go check those out. But I was like, I don't have an opportunity to talk about any of this stuff. I kind of want to. Yeah. And that's why I did it. So, like, the thing is, people went in, I was like, what's on that list? It's not like, that's the like, guy write shorthand, so I'm going to read one out. Um, we've got so, for a few examples, like one that was recently Spielberg wanted the FBI to shoot ET. The Whisper Bar delivered to stores who didn't order it. BBC presenter's mum thought he was being attacked by a ghost. Disney merch at the bottom of the ocean. Seagull proof fries in Australia. World's end booze make them stronger. Chris Evans's magnetic nips. And I understand what all those things mean, but... Magnetic... He's got magnetic nips. Nips. Tell me that. (laughs) Tell me that you want to read or watch a video discussing that topic, though. I, I, I'm intrigued. And I, think, and I want to write the article discussing that topic. And some of those will already been written, some will be written in the future, some of them will be turned into videos, no doubt. And if you'd like to see those topics eventually realised, you've got to subscribe and keep watching. And, you know, bug us in the comments and on social media to just, you know, just, hey, talk about the nips. Talk about them magnetic Chris Evans nips. <laughs> all, all the nips. Just free the nip. Let's go. Well, thank you for watching, everybody. <laughs> see you all next time.